Um, all right, let's go on to the next one saying Don 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 High saying Dyer no longer fits our system as a centre back, but he may thrive as an inverted right back, but with his decision with his decent passing range and basic defending. There has there has to be a reason he is scouted by Bayern and Dortmund. Well, they scouted him and said no. So <laughs> <laughs> that was, I don't know if you can use that as evidence that it would work. Um, could he play inverted right back? Would I rather him inverted right back than centre back? Now that's a question, probably, because I think uh, I would rather him not as the last man, if you know what I mean. So if he like if he gets beaten, there are players behind him. But I'm just trying to imagine like Dyer trying to do an overlapping run and just like taking years to get to the opposition's... Uh, I'm surprised you haven't started banging your head on the table. Yeah, yet. I should have. Um, <laughs> no, I, w- I don't think it would work. Maybe in an emergency, but I, I, I don't. I wouldn't want. I wouldn't want to try him there. I really wouldn't. Um, there's a comment here in the in the live chat saying um, that's not an unpopular opinion. That's just a bad opinion. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Sorry, Don. What was his name? Don De. Sorry, mate. Yeah, go on. Let's uh, go to the next one. Dopper. Another song. One says, "Hot Shot Tottenham is a better song than Aussie's Dream." Yes, yes, yes. yes you yes, think so? Yes, yes, yes. I love Hot Shot Tottenham. You think it's better Hot than Aussie's Tottenham. Dream? Hot Shot Tottenham is my favorite favorite Tottenham song. Yeah, Spurs are on the way to Wembley is iconic. It is iconic, but Hot Shot Tottenham is just one of the like just as a song underused as a song underused. it is just incredible it's an incredible song it really is Ray Clemens Mitchell Thomas <laughs> Gary Stephen Steve Hodge they're all gonna, gonna put on a show, show for you. you what a song it's, it's an a great song, song. Great I actually song. I prefer listening to that than Ozzy's Dream you reckon yeah they, I don't know I think uh, for me when the in terms of like fans singing it in the uh, like when I hear fans singing, I agree with that. I ju- it just Aussie's dream sounds better. Spurs are on their way to Wembley. Hot Tottenham's, shot, Tottenham's gonna... not a stand song. It's not a stand song. No. It's a it's a hardcore song. It's one for like the like coach hard trips school. on the yeah, way yeah, up. Coach you know trips I mean? exactly. <laughs> in the <laughs> pub stuff like it just, that. Yeah, and it got it got a revamp, didn't it? With the uh, what what to twenty fourteen final. Um, well, I guess not enough people know about it. Maybe it needs another the revamp. Problem with Hot Shot Tottenham is we lost that cup final. Yeah. That was the problem. And so no one remembers the song. That's it. <laughs> That's true. Uh, Hot Shot Tottenham is a great song. Go check it out, people, if you haven't heard it. Um, fantastic. Is it better than Aussie's Dream? Depends what you're looking for. But um, I, I think in the stands, I would rather sing Aussie's Dream. But I would say there's nothing better than going on a cup run, going deep into the cup and singing Spurs are on their way to Wembley. Because exactly. everyone knows that song. Mm-hmm. Everyone knows that song. Not everyone knows Hot Shot Top. That's also very true. And also especially true. all the words. And it goes pretty fast. So actually, like people get a lot muddled up with Hot Shot Top. So. <laughs> even some of the old players years. as well. <laughs> yeah, look, there's players from the 80s. It's very difficult to even remember who they are for a lot of people. So, All right, next one from Aaron Burr saying, Eric Dyer is a world-class defender. Oh, next. <laughs> next. Come on, you're just trolling. You're just trolling. Eric Dyer's a world-class defender. Come on. Come on. That's definitely a gooner. Oh, come on. All right, we're moving on. Uh, Jude THFC said, by the time he retires, Vicario will be looked at as a much better goalkeeper for us than Hugo Lloris ever was. That's a big shout. That is a massive shout. Very big as... shout. Look, I think there's um, there's kind of like a weird... There's a weird feeling in the air about Hugo Lloris because he's such, been such a good servant for the Spurs, but he gets such a kind of negative rap from the Spurs fans because of how he's like taken to declining and how much he has declined over the last year or so. But I prefer to remember Hugo Lloris for the good times and how good he actually was in those first like six or seven years at Tottenham, one of the best goalkeepers in the Premier League um, over that stretch of time. But I mean, Vicario has got a lot to do um, if he's going to be remembered in the same light as Hugo Lloris. I think he can do it. And I think early signs are really good, but I can't sit here and say like he's definitely going to do it. Yeah, 100%. And I was, you got people got to remember as well, in his prime, how good of a shot stopper Lloris was. I think he might have been the, one of the, if not the, one of the best shot stoppers in the Premier League with how amazing he was with some of his reflexes. He makes some saves, which I've, I think just I've never seen any other keeper make. Like that one in the Champions League against um, Leverkusen. But when he rolled across. Oh, the- <laughs> how did he do that? I've still, I watch, I still watch that today and I have no idea how he made that save, to be honest. Just still, rolls across the line. <laughs> it still looks like he went over the line. I, I actually still watch saw it that now. on Twitter the other day. I still watch it now. I'm thinking that that's over the line. And then the replay shows it's just not. I just don't know how he did it. Like, he's an incredible shot stopper. And as much as Vicario has done a good job so far, he hasn't showed that level yet, in my opinion. So I'm going to reserve judgment for that. But potentially, with uh, if Vicario can get to that level, and then obviously he's a bit much better from like playing out the back and stuff. So 
It may be, but I, I, I think at the moment, definitely not. I think Hugo was an incredible keeper in his prime. All right, what's the next one? Connor Robinson says, uh, I don't really like overwhelming positivity at the moment. <laughs> As fans, we've gotten good. We've we've forgotten how good Nuno's first games were and our form under Conte at the start of the 22-23 season. I'm not saying we shouldn't be positive, but claiming all of our players are better and that we're winning the league cringe i think is that a well, cringe face or uh, just a nervous face well first of all i don't think you'll find any spurs fan that is claiming that we're going to win the league this no. season second of all i think like most spurs fans getting excited are still saying you know fifth or sixth is the good is a good season for us so that shows you where um our kind of heads are at with that and with the stuff about Nuno, I mean, we literally uh, did a video and allu- and spoke about this a few days ago, talking about the stats behind Ange Ball. I mean, if you compare the stats behind Ange Ball to the stats behind Nuno Ball three games after the first three games, literally after after Nuno, we were like bottom of the league for like every metric about running, shots, time in the final third, like everything, pretty much everything. We we're bottom of the league and we had won the first three games. We were, we were winning by like Son crossing it in and like right. bouncing in. like Yeah, touching no we were one. winning one nils. <laughs> we were winning one nils, very fortuitous. And we both sat here in that period and said, this is unsustainable. This ain't going to work. This ain't going to happen. Under Postacoglu, it's completely different completely different it's literally like a world away and you're looking at spurs we're in the top one to three in pretty much all the metrics that we were sitting bottom for under nuno and we're winning games convincingly and you couldn't say that under nuno yeah 100 percent. so uh yeah i i don't agree um uh, well i don't i don't agree i agree that we're not winning the league i don't think anyone should be saying that but um I can't remember how we started the season under Conte last year. I do think we had a decent start results-wise. I remember, though, I do remember distinctly that performances were not great. I remember we beat Southampton. We drew a Chelsea, didn't we? We drew a Chelsea very luckily. Yeah. I remember we played West Ham and we were not particularly good and we got very lucky to get a draw in that game as well. And I remember, like, we were we were getting decent results, but, like, I remember we were saying, like, we have to hope performances improve, otherwise it's going to be a difficult season. I remember just consistently saying, oh, we haven't clicked yet, we haven't clicked yet. Yeah, you just wait till we click you just wait (laughs) and it just never happened we just never clicked throughout the whole season (laughs) albeit the results like weren't horrific throughout the whole season but in terms of performances they just never went in his first six months Conte they were very good the performances but we never really got back to that level and yeah, I think I think it's night and day the performances now to what we were seeing then. So and I think you can't. I don't think you can compare the situation. Like it's all well and good getting the results, but you need to see other things happening apart from the results because the results are going to dry up if you don't see those other things. Exactly. At this stage of the season, especially, I think it's always yeah. performances over results. Yeah. Uh, next one is from Jamie J Plan saying, "Should have kept Carl Walker Peters. I understand he didn't get a lot of football, but he was a great player." What would you say? I to like Carl Walker Peters. Um, Would you have kept him? Was it a bad mistake to, to let him go? Was it a bad mistake to let him go? Um, I would say in this system, probably not. I would say he probably had his uses under Mourinho and Conte. I think we probably could have done with him, especially with a lot of the wing backs being injured a lot of the time. And I think he probably would have been a better fullback for those managers. I think now in the inverted fullback kind of thing that we're doing, um, I don't know if he would have been that great for it. I don't think he'd been bad, but I like I'd much prefer our current fullbacks to him in those positions. So um I'm, look, we got twelve million for him. I don't think it was a bad sell. I think probably at the time, I remember we uh, a, um, for a while we had Doc. We had Aurier, we had um, Emerson at wing back, and we were thinking like we could have had Walker Peters, and he'd be much better than these guys. So I think there was probably a time where we we're regretting it, but I think now it's probably that time's probably gone. Yeah, and also you look at it. He got relegated with Southampton last year and no club p- picked him up and brought him back to the Premier League as a championship defender now. Yeah, which is, I think, a mistake. I think I mean, he could have, should have gone, for, like, maybe Burnley or Sheffield United should have gone for him. And also I mean, even, even that, a better club. Even that in itself, saying Burnley or a Sheffield United. Even a better United club and Everton, someone should have picked him up. I think <laughs> Another team fighting for relegation. Maybe a Fulham, <laughs> Fulham, Fulham. Another team that's probably <laughs> fighting for relegation a this year. Villa, <laughs> <laughs> someone. I think, you could, I think you could still be a, a top, top 10 Premier League player, in my opinion. All right, let's someone. move on. Um, THFC Himothy says if Romero was at City he would be named the best defender in the league I actually think there's validity to that I really do um, you're seeing Messi come out last night saying uh, he's the best defender in the world we kept saying consistently time and time again if Romero had um, you know com- com- competent partners next to him we'd see a lot better Romero we are seeing that this season in my opinion this is the best stretch of games we've probably seen from Romero in a Spurs shirt 
And if he was at Man City, he would have that all alongside him. You know, he would have top quality players all around him. So you would have seen consistently a much better Cuti Romero. And I think that um, rival fans in the Premier League would have sat up and take, taken notice. So I, I'm actually seeing people, rival fans, especially Arsenal fans, talking about, oh, Kutu Romero is no good, you know. Last year, he had a shocking season. How can you call him a top defender? And I was, I keep saying, like... You don't get it, yeah. You just don't get it. Like, you put good defenders around him, you'll see, you know, def defenders... First of all, they need protection from their midfield and they need help from their midfield. And second of all, they need good players around them to, so they're not bloody like trying to, to, to make up all the errors that are going on, on around them. Especially, they need someone competent behind them as well. And I think Romero is slowly, slowly getting that. He's got Pesuma ahead of him, which is doing unbelievable. He's got Van de Ven, who I think they, they, just, they just fit each other completely in, in terms of a partnership. So I actually think... Um, Maybe not the best defender in the league, but definitely one of in the top three it, or something. If, if he was at City, I think it'd be scary how yeah. good he would be. For, uh, like especially when since he first came into league and like three years in, I think people would look at him in a very different light. I think Tottenham have just been just all over the place since he's come into the league. Un uh, unfortunately for him, and he came. Obviously, he's a fantastic defender, but we've just been a mess. And you've seen when we're settled, he's a completely different player. But as soon as things are rocky, like not when, when everyone else forms a dropping, so does his. But I think he's a phenomenal defender. I think people wake up this season about how good he really is. And I think he will start to be in those conversations about best defender in the league. But we'll see. Um, Mark. Can he get better than Saliba? Can he get better than Saliba? Potentially. Potentially. Because like, they're very different defenders, aren't they? Saliba's more of a Van de Ven kind of defender. Mm. And uh, I think Romero is more of a Gabriel, even yeah. though they're on opposite yeah, sides. Yeah, yeah. Um, so very different. I think um, uh, Romero might be better playing out of the back than Saliba, though. Mm. I think there's a good case for that. Um, Mark Channel says, at We Are Tottenham TV, going out of the League Cup is a good thing. It gives Big Ange more time for training his methods into the players and getting them to utilise this way naturally. Going out of a cup is never a good it's thing. A good let, thing mate. Let, let me just put it out there. Going out of a cup is never, never, never a good thing, especially when we're out of Europe and we don't have much football this season. Like being in the Carabao Cup doesn't give you that much less time on the no. training ground. You're talking about two or three games to get to a cup final. Mm. Like it's ridiculous to think like going out of the Carabao Cup is a good thing. We've just all we've done is chuck a trophy away for no for no real reason. To be honest, I think. It was a massive uh, down mark on Ange Postacoglu and we should never have made nine changes. And even if we made just three or four changes, I think we, w we win that game. 100% and uh, I think it was a big error um, especially in this season uh, specifically with no Europe I, I don't I can't back up that opinion there was a good thing maybe if you're talking about like a conference league maybe you had a point but I, I don't think going out of the league cup was a good thing um, I, I don't think it would have taken too much time out of the training um, I just think it just all it did was take away an avenue first of all took an avenue took away an avenue for the fringe players to get starts and also it's taken away an avenue for a trophy so either way you look at it I don't see any positive yeah. Uh, next up, the Irish King has a few. He's given us four, three in one tweet. The first one says, Jose should have stayed at the time. Yes, because he should have given, given the cup final. So I agree with that. And then sacked after the cup final. Yeah, cup. sack him after the cup final. But he should have had the cup final. We can all agree with that. We can all agree with that. It was absolutely ridiculous why he was sacked and when he was sacked. Yeah. I mean... That, was, that, that goes again to the tweet before about Daniel Levy saying he hasn't made any mistakes. That was yeah. also another massive mistake. Yeah, agreed. Um, another one is Hossam Ghali was unfairly treated and he should have stayed. No. I mean, on. how wrong can, can you get in, in just a few words? You but don't chuck the shirt down. You no. don't chuck the shirt down. And I've said it consistently so many times. I, I find it very wrong to boo Tottenham Hotspur players. But when you do stuff like that, when you do what Undombele did coming off against Morecambe, those are the times where it's, I think, right to boo a Tottenham Hotspur player. You can't get substituted and then throw the shirt down at your manager. 100% disrespecting the shirt, disrespecting the badge. Did, uh, did he apologise after? I don't remember him. Has he ever commented on it publicly? I don't oh, think I so. Uh, the only thing I remember was um, two years later, we tried to re Rennap tried to bring him on in an FA Cup game and all the fans started booing and he's like, all right, let's not bring him on. Yeah. <laughs> and that was it. And the last one uh, from the Irish King is Tarapt would have been a £100 million player under Poch at the time. 
He definitely um, had the ability. Yeah, but is it another Ndombele kind of thing where his attitude got in the way? Probably. Uh, the, I actually think the only, he, he only finally realised his potential probably in two occasions. That was one season in the championship at QPR and then there was one season at Benfica where he was playing defensive mid and it was actually really good for like a <laughs> season. I remember that, like seeing, I think I can't remember if it was the Champions League or the Europa League. I'm, I'm looking at their lineup and I'm like, oh wow, a, De a Delta Raptor playing for <laughs> Benfica. Wow. Yeah. Um, and then I, I was watching the game. He's like, He's playing defensive mid. Like, yeah. what, what the hell is going on yeah, over here? Yeah, he was class. He <laughs> was so good. He actually like took some responsibility. So there were times where he fulfilled it, but I think just, I remember uh, Redknapp doing a press conference and saying like, um, he said, I played him a reserve game the other day. I think my man would have done more running than their Delta <laughs> Rabbit. Um, so he said, you know, unless he's willing to work hard and run, I can't pick him. And I think that's the story of his career. Apart from all the talent, he just never really had the work ethic. Mm. All right, what's the next one? Uh, next one is uh, Pison uh, Hewton says... Chris Hewton. Uh, Pison, yeah, Chris Hewton. We'll call him Chris Hewton. Uh, Brian Hill is more suited to Ange's system than Manuel Solomon or Perisic, and I'm excited to see Hill in action soon. I mean, it's hard for me to sit here and say he's uh, more suited to Ange's system than than um, Manuel Solomon. Maybe Ivan Perisic, although I do think Perisic is actually a really good fit for Ange's system on the left-hand side. Um, where he doesn't have to keep tracking back all the way and uh, run up and down that pitch um, all day long at his age. So I think actually Perisic is suited to the system. I think Manuel is also suited to the system in terms of um, how good he is on the ball and his dri dribbling ability. But I also think uh, Brian Hill is suited to the system. I've said it pretty much since Ange has come in that I'm really excited to see what Ange can do with Brian Hill because no manager has ever seemed to get him on the pitch consistently he's always been the like kind of last thought of this football club where he goes out on the last day of each window on loan um, and I really believe in his qualities I think he's got good dribbling ability I think he's got good quality on the ball and I think he's a fighter as well and a presser so I think um there's definitely some validity to say that Ange can can get something out of Brian Hill. I agree, and I actually I think he might be the best dribbler out of the three, to be honest. So if if he, if that is true, if he is the best dribbler out of the three, then he think I think he might have a point about him being more suited because I think he really uh, relishes that. I feel like sometimes Manuel Solomon, when he gets into those. Um, opportunity to take someone on for some reason he doesn't have that confidence to do and he just he always checks back he only does it when he sees the space he doesn't do it when he's just one-on-one -on -one with the defender for some reason I so, don't know I, I felt quite differently because I thought against Manchester United when he came on uh, he was taking on his man uh, two or three times he did it no he didn't he didn't he, I he, thought he did he, he only did it when it was like he didn't do it when he has space and he's one on one with the defender and he like goes for like direct and goes I mean, to take him on. I don't he he did it. He did it. Situations. He did it. He did a few like nice touches where he beat someone, but he didn't take people on where there's like a got with a chance to get to the byline. And I felt and he that's did it in the game as well. I didn't feel like that. Like the ch the the, th the the chance the the two chances he'd got were great assists. Don't get me wrong. He didn't take anyone on for the assists, but he did two really good assists. But. When, he, when, when we're in those situations where we're getting the ball very quickly out wide and he's got a chance to run at his fullback, for some reason he doesn't do it. I feel like he doesn't do it. He, not, he doesn't do it with confidence. I wasn't talking about the uh, the assist moments uh, for Manuel Solomon against Burnley, but I felt like in the first half there were a couple of moments where he actually did get the ball on that left-hand side and he took on his man quite successfully. It was just what happened after that didn't really uh, happen. I feel like there were too many occasions where he had the opportunity to do so and he decided to check back rather than actually go at his fullback. Back. And I feel like Brian Hill would be more willing to do that. I've seen Brian Hill, Hill even in the little clips that we've seen, take people on and, and try and beat people and 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 be uh, uh, creative in that point. So I think Brian Hill could potentially be better suited, but we just haven't seen enough of him. And I'm still not sure in the system that we play now whether he'd be better on the left or the right. I'm, I'm undecided about that as well. So time uh, will tell. Time will tell. But I think he is nearly back. Uh, to be honest, mm, yeah. 